Hi, my name is Georgie and I'm an astrophysics PhD student at the University of Manchester. Hi, I'm Medina. I'm a first year PhD student in chemistry at the University of Manchester as well. And we'll be answering today the internet's most asked questions about PhDs. Never doing a PhD. And then I had to eat my words. All right, let's go. Question number one. What does PhD mean? In the UK, we have our postgrad studies and you're a postgraduate researcher where you do research in your given field and at the end of that, you do a thesis. It takes from, I think, three to four years. Yeah, so, yeah usually yeah. around three and a half. Um, yeah. You can do a PhD full time or you can do it part time. And then obviously it takes, takes longer if it's part time, but after you do your bachelor's, which is your undergraduate study, you can then do a master's degree, or you can do a master's degree as part of your bachelor's degree. That's what I did. Um, but after you've graduated, that's why it's postgraduate, you do a PhD, which is stands for Doctorate of Philosophy. And once you get to the end of it and you do your thesis, you get to be called a doctor. But you're not an actual medical doctor. That's something different. All right. And for the next question. All right, next question, off we go. Why are PhDs so difficult? That's a multifaceted question. Um, yeah. it, you have to dedicate a lot of your time to doing your research in this one field. So you become essentially an expert in that field. So you have to know all the niche details of that. And yeah. I guess that's why it might be so difficult. Yeah, so an undergraduate degree is generally well, it's, it's not that general because you are studying a specific subject, but it's much more general than a PhD. A PhD really narrows in on one area of science and you have to actually do research and contribute to the scientific community. So um, doing things like publishing papers, going to conferences, giving talks, all of that scary stuff. Um, so instead of just learning about the subject, you are actively contributing and giving back. And you have to be kind of at the forefront of your field. You have to know kind of what's going on in that field and engross yourself in it. Okay. How much does a PhD cost? I do not know. I'm on a scholarship or a studentship, which essentially funds me to do my PhD, so I get the UK, UKRI stipend. So they essentially pay me monthly to do my PhD and they cover my tuition fees and tuition costs. And there are certain costs associated with that, which kind of yeah. go on in the background. Yeah, if, you, if you're a chemistry student, for example, then you probably need stuff like chemicals that you work with in the lab and, I don't know, solvents? I don't know chemistry, <laughs> um, but the equipment that you use is paid for by your research grant and stuff like travel. So I've been to a few conferences in my time and when I, when I go to a conference, that is paid for by the university. Next question Ooh. is how to find a PhD supervisor. So I did my undergrad here. I did an integrated master's and in my final year I did a master's project and it was a research project and so I looked through a handbook of different projects with the supervisors attached and picked one and you get put into the selection process and I got the supervisor that I wanted. At the time I remember I'd said I was never doing a PhD ever. I remember my Why second not? year. I I did a second year internship right. and it was in biochem, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I didn't okay. do biology A-level. Right. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, yeah, no, PhD is not for me. Turns out, here I am. There, there's more to the world of PhD. Exactly. And never say never, because I remember specifically saying, I'm never doing a PhD. And then I had to eat my words <laughs> because I had to apply for it. So yeah, I applied and that's how I found my supervisor. I feel like I had a little bit of a, a cheat way, but that's why I found him. 
prepared. Master's project is a great way to, to meet supervisors. Yeah. So I didn't do my undergraduate here at Manchester. Um, so finding my supervisor was a little bit more difficult. I had to email around. I looked at lots of different places at lots of different universities. There are all sorts of lists. So I knew that I wanted to do my PhD in astrophysics. So that narrowed things down a little bit. And I knew what I had experience in through my master's project. So I was looking at radio astronomy. I was looking at stuff in our galaxy. And that helped narrow down the sort of pool of PhD places. Then I sent out some emails. I chatted to a few potential supervisors to try and see how we got on, see how, um, how they were as a supervisor. And I got along really well with Gary, who's my supervisor here. Um, so then I put in, put in my application, managed to get the place, and here I am. Okay, what have we got? How to explain my PhD. That's what I'm trying to figure out as well. Yeah, so PhDs are, as I said before, they are focused on one really specific area of science. And so it's very easy to get caught up in the minutiae of stellar formation mechanisms and then end up sprouting gobbledygook. So what I found when it comes to explaining my PhD to people, especially to people like my mum who don't know much astrophysics, is start simple, start from the big concepts. I'm looking at how baby stars are born and then if that person, if the person you're talking to is interested and wants to learn more, then you can go into the nitty gritty details of, I'm looking at specific chemical signatures in the protostellar regions and trying to find circumstellar disks and all of that. But start big picture and then move in is, is my advice to explaining the, the topic of your PhD. Yeah, I feel like mine sounds very scary because I have to say uranium, and I have to say cyanides, so people are like, <sighs> but mine- Those are two scary things. <laughs> They're two very dangerous things. And people know about them. But it's me exploring the low valent, um, low valent uranium reactivity and seeing what we can do with it, if we can turn it into something better. And just because the F block, which is where uranium sits, because you have the periodic table and you have all of those, you have those two rows that are at the bottom and they're very poorly developed. So we're looking into research and seeing what we could potentially do with them. And it's not actually dangerous. Dangerous, that, that's, isn't it? Everything's dangerous. You're, you know? you're not like, gonna blow up the lab, is, right? Is dangerous. Please don't blow up things. I'm not planning to. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so last, last one, question. Last one. Ooh. Are PhDs worth it? Ask me this in three and a half years. So uh, I almost at the end of my PhD. So I've, I've done that three and a half years of, of slog. And I'd say, yeah, it's definitely worth it. Um, you get to learn so much about such interesting stuff. You get to travel. You get to go all around the world. You get to be at the, the forefront of scientific discovery, really, which which is great. It's Confusing and scary sometimes, but definitely in the end worth it. So I've not been around the world yet because of my PhD. So once I do, I think I will say it's worth it because I like to travel. But I think for now, I'm really enjoying it. So what does the future hold? That's the question. Uh, you could do a PhD on that. You can do a PhD on anything, I think. You have to find funding. Once you're funded, go ahead.